You know, I had meant to do some videos on other topics, but what's occurring with the Federal Reserve and the banking industry lately is just so outrageous. I thought it was time to do another kind of summary of how this scam works. It's great that so many people are waking up lately to the scam of central banking, um, but I see a lot of divergent views, and I thought a video simplifying the process might be helpful. So the underlying scam here is beyond central banking. It's fractional reserve lending. If any other entity besides a bank conducted what's called fractional reserve lending, they'd be convicted of fraud because that's based on a fraud. You can't take somebody's money, promise it to the person, and lend it out at the same time. When I give my money to a REIT or a mutual fund or a hedge fund, those investment entities take my money and they tell me, we're going to lend this money out and we may get you a 75% return, we may lose half your money, we may lose all of your money. That's an honest free market way of conducting business. What banks do under fractional reserve lending is fraud. They take your money, they promise it to you, and they lend it out at the same time. Now this creates a lot of inflation uh, because the money is lent out and then redeposited and then lent out again. This inflation robs the average American, but the depositors are fundamentally at risk because their deposit money has been lent out. Now in the past, historically, when banks did this type of fraud, it would collapse fairly quickly. The loans wouldn't get paid back and the depositors would make a run on the bank demanding their deposit money back, which most of it wouldn't be there at that point. So this type of fraud collapsed quickly and depositors were upset and rather than unfortunately insisting on the correct type of reform which would be to require banks to be honest and say yes we've lent out your money you may not get it back just like if you deposit your money with any other investment entity and if you do want your money to be guaranteed you have to put it in a separate type of account which is not subject to fractional lending where the money is not lent out so it's available for you to withdraw at any time that's the simplest best solution in my opinion to the entire scam of fractional banking and the central banking that is required to enable this scam. However, in the past, this wasn't the solution that the banks wanted because the banks make a fortune through this scam. What banks chose was central banking, where when the leveraged loans start to collapse and the depositors demand their money back, there's a central bank which can create money out of thin air and inject it into the banks so that the depositors are paid off with this counterfeit currency. And then this counterfeit currency flows through the entire economy, creating more inflation so that it's easier for the loans to get paid back in inflated money. So central banking is really just a, a system that's necessary to enable the underlying fraud of fractional reserve lending. It's almost unimaginable how much wealth is robbed through this system because all of this inflated money benefits the banks and it's an enormous amount of inflation trillions of dollars a year some years it's caused the dollar to lose 98 percent of its value since we had a central bank uh, almost 100 years ago so this is an incredible amount of wealth that's been stolen and what's more it makes it almost impossible for the average american to effectively save money because the underlying currency is constantly inflating, plus you're being taxed on the imaginary inflated value of your savings. And when the average American can't save money effectively, they're forced to go to a bank to take out a loan for everything, and then you have a nation of indentured servants, which we've developed very quickly once we got a central bank. Maybe the simplest way to view this or explain it to other people is to ask, why would banks be given the exclusive right to counterfeit currency? If your neighbor were in his basement counterfeiting $100 bills and the Secret Service came to arrest him and your neighbor said, oh no, don't arrest me, I'm going to spend these counterfeit $100 bills and stimulate the economy, you'd laugh at that defense. And yet when banks counterfeit money and they say that it's necessary to stimulate the economy, people believe it because they repeat this lie often enough. People actually get confused and think that an inflating currency equals creation of underlying value. Only production gives underlying value. An inflating currency just benefits the people who are able to counterfeit the currency at the expense of the people who don't get to counterfeit currency.
Now, it's great to see that more and more Americans are waking up to this fundamental issue which controls their lives, and a few more politicians are now looking at the possibility of dismantling this system. But really, the vast majority of Americans are just caught up chasing after side political issues, and they're following politicians who are sold out to the entities which control our financial system. And unless a politician is really focused on getting rid of the central bank and reforming fractional reserve lending, then that politician either doesn't understand how the financial system works or more likely they're sold out to the financial entities which control you. So personally, I don't hold out too much hope for political reform. I think what's really more likely to happen is that the system will simply collapse under its own weight, as it very often does, because fractional reserve lending and, and central banking require constant growth. It's a parasitic system, and it requires constant growth to be siphoned off from the economy. And when you get to an issue like peak oil or the decline of American and European manufacturing, as those jobs are transferred to China, suddenly you don't have fundamental growth in the economy anymore. There's nothing to take up all that inflation which is created. And sure, as loans begin to go bad at first, that's deflationary. But ultimately, with a central bank, the central bank always just pumps out more and more money until the currency finally collapses. Now, the people who are counterfeiting money will always try to delay that currency collapse, whether it's the banking industry that's counterfeiting money or in a communist country or a dictatorship when it's the government that's counterfeiting the money. And they try to slow this collapse by making it more and more difficult for people to buy precious metals or transfer money out of the country. But ultimately, it's going to lead to a currency collapse unless they can maintain such a rigid control over people's lives that people have no freedom to protect their wealth. Or if they can get a foreign country to intervene and stop the currency collapse. For example, we backstopped the yen, otherwise there probably would have been a partial yen collapse back in the 90s. Um, and then the other example people use of deflation is the Great Depression, forgetting that Roosevelt had to make it illegal for Americans to own gold. Otherwise, again, you probably would have had too much wealth transferred into gold and, and a partial currency collapse. So ultimately, people find ways around this given enough time. Whenever there is a sustained downturn in the economy for years and years, and a central bank, or a government for that matter, that can counterfeit its own currency, you always ultimately get a currency collapse. You can't find an example when there was just deflation forever. It's simply not possible as long as some entity has the ability to constantly counterfeit money. So at least by understanding how the system works, even if there is no political reform, you can protect yourself. And the hardest thing to do is really just to overcome a lifetime of conditioning where you've been taught that this paper currency, backed by nothing, has value. It doesn't have any fundamental value, and it's being counterfeited at an outrageous rate currently to try to stave off the collapse of our leveraged loan system. The faster you can overcome a lifetime of conditioning and start transferring your paper currency into something that actually retains value, the, the more ahead of the curve you'll be.